and hit record. I think we're ready. Hello. All right. Well, my name is Allison Amshoff. I am the speech language pathologist at NTech, and NTech is located at Spalding University. Um, NTech is one of five assistive technology resource centers in the state of Kentucky. Um, we are located within the Arbach School of Occupational Therapy. So um, we are kind of a subset of that OT program. And the cool thing about us being a um, assistive technology resource center is, is that we receive um, all different types of assistive technology for individuals to be able to try and utilize before they um, purchase. So that's a really cool thing. So at NTEC, the services that are offered are physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy. Um, some of the programs that we have are the Assistive Technology Lending Library, which is what um, I was talking about as far as if there's technology that um, you see or you're talking with somebody and they say, hey, we use this and it worked really great. We want to try it out. Um, we're the place in this region um, that you can check it out. Um, we also have a program called KITE. It's COSER Integrated Technology Experience. Um, we typically pre-COVID did this program uh, JCPS's spring break. We did it um, once in June and once in July. And with that program, individuals are paired with buddies. Um, those buddies could be OT students, uh, CODA students, so occupational therapy assistant students, uh, speech therapy students, we've had nursing students, um, athletic trainers, nurses, basically um, teachers, any pre-professional student that is with us, um, they are paired with the individual and they are with them all week. So they get to know them and they help them um, participate in the curriculum that we develop utilizing technology. And then in February um, of this year, we initiated a team program, which was going to focus on job skills training, um, ADL type of um, activities. And we started it in February and got a couple sessions in and then had to stop because of COVID. So we were hoping to gather a lot of good data on, um, and I, that will come back once it's safe because we realize there's a need for um, further programming past, you know, that once we kind of get into that teenage um, age range. Um, something else that we have is called a virtual playground, and this is something for all ages. I'm going to play a video for you all just to show you. Uh -oh. Hang on. Uh, we're not seeing anything without you're not you might have to because it's on zoom you might have to, to close out and then hear that and okay. like yeah maybe like go to you i don't know where it is but does it live in youtube maybe yeah let me see now let me see if that works do you all see it yeah now? yes yeah we can see that okay let me try it again So is that is at NTech? 
that is actually at Intech. So what didn't get shown in the video because we were in the middle of doing this for our adults and teens, we have the virtual reality. So it actually emulates real situations. So you're in a kitchen cooking and there's a fire, what would you do? So you're, it would, it's with the virtual reality, how to put out the fire. Um, there's one about how to, how you would get out of the house, what you should do. And it's actually reading your movement, you know, duck down, get on the floor. So there's other things um, that just haven't made the video yet because they're new. Um, but yeah, the, the virtual reality has the cameras that basically you would see at like a children's museum that you can interact with, um, which is pretty cool. A lot of yeah, people- Yeah, that's like, very neat. Um, that's actually um, pre-COVID. It's actually open to the community. So we would have days where just, you know, hey, we want to come in and check it out. People would email or call and we would let them know, you know, we're going to be open to the community. Like Wednesday was our community day. So people could come in, parents could come in, individuals, therapist, if they wanted to, you know, work in a certain setting um, or work on a certain um, piece of equipment, they could come in and utilize that space. Yeah. I'm going to take advantage of that when we're back open for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, there's so many cool things that and it's fun. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a lot of stress relief too. It's just fun. Um, on this presentation, I gave you all the link. I'm not going to go into it because it's just a form, but this is the link. Um, Intech also has a grant program. It's called the Cozier Charities Financial Assistance Program. And the reason this was developed is because um, I'm sure as a lot of people have found through navigation with assistive technology, um, insurance does not want to pay for computers, software programs, apps, um, iPads, you know, they will pay for some things if it's communication related, but if it's, we need a, a specific program for writing, or maybe we need an Apple Pencil um, for writing, or we need a program. Um, insurance is not great about paying for that. So um, the Shriners see that it doesn't, it doesn't also have, it doesn't have to be about technology. You know, they've purchased adapted bikes or just anything that would be beneficial to the individual or their family and funding is a barrier or insurance won't cover. Um, this grant application can be filled out. It's a one page, simple, easy, um, document. We usually, um, pre-COVID, had big parties and invited the Shriners. Obviously, that's not going to happen now, so we'll probably do some kind of Zoom um, award. I think the date that's on this is November 30th, um, so I think our hope is if it doesn't happen at the end of November, um, to have it happen by the end of the year. Um, obviously, if somebody has an immediate need, they let us know and we try to go ahead and get that process through. Um, so another topic we were going to talk about is non-traditional learning. So I know that's something that everybody is working through, experiencing. Um, also, online therapy sessions, everything virtual at this point. Um, so I thought we would talk about some technology, ways to access, how to have some engagement with technology. Um, and through this, I'm going to just talk about some different pieces of equipment, some different strategies that we've used at Intech. Um, and obviously, if you all have comments and things at the end, then we could uh, absolutely am um, lifelong learning. Um, this is um, added by our physical therapist. So um, she talks a lot about ready to learn. And we also talk about this at Intech um, when your body is not in a good position, you're not ready, then it's harder to get focused, it's harder um, to pay attention. So um, positioning where your um, computer is, where your keyboard is, um, this has been big, I think, with, um, I know myself included, when I first started doing this, it's sitting on the couch, where wherever I felt comfortable, but then um, sometimes it wasn't always the best position for me to be focused. Um, having your body at the right position to keep your neck relaxed and having your posture bent over. Um, I think this is huge to 
stand up and take breaks. Um, and I think that's a big thing to remember when doing virtual learning um, that what breaks need to look like or what how long my focus is um, and being able to advocate for that. Um, looking away from your computer screen every 20 minutes or so. I feel like everybody kind of gets fatigued now because we're on screen so much. Um, and she included just a picture of good posture. I know this is not always obtainable at home um, for a foot rest. Something that we've done is a stool under your feet, um, even books stacked up under somebody's feet. If you know your feet are dangling, having your feet on something to help to keep you grounded and at a good position. Um, if, if your chair is not adjustable, using pillows to lean you forward or taking pillows out. Um, I even at home adjusted my workstation, you know, by adding maybe a box under my keyboard so that I'm at a good typing position if that's what I'm going to do. So not having to go out and buy all these things, thinking about things at home that could get your monitor up or get your keyboard up so that we're not in these strained positions. Um, some different technology available. So Chromebooks, I know a lot of people are using Chromebooks, iPads. Um, something that we've been using a lot of is there's a, a program called Reflector. It's installed on um, your computer. It's a download. I think we paid maybe like $12 for it. The cool thing about it is, is that if I'm doing something on my iPad, so maybe if I'm doing work and I'm participating with a group, and I want to share, you can utilize this just like you would at Apple TV where you can project an image. I could project an image from my iPad onto my computer screen so that it's actually going to be shared along with my picture. Um, I use this a lot uh, for modeling for communication or if I'm typing a sentence, then I'll project that um, if it's an app on my iPad. Um, so that's been really cool to use. And then Apple TV, obviously, if it needs to be bigger. Um, I know initially people were using phones and that is challenging because they're small. Um, Apple TVs, you can, you know, project onto the TV. Um, Bluetooth keyboards. So um, a big challenge that we've heard from individuals is on-screen keyboards are sometimes difficult to utilize when you're working on a screen and then having to use an on-screen keyboard. Um, so I've got a picture later on of a keyboard that will connect via Bluetooth. Um, and there's all kinds that are available off the shelf. There are some that have maybe some bigger keys. I know some of the um, keyboards that, you know, magnetically attach to the iPads, there's not a lot of feedback in the buttons and the buttons are small. So sometimes it's harder to get that input into the fingers that I've actually typed. So um, the company Big Keys that have those really spring loaded keys um, that have that click when you're typing, um, those are now um, can connect through Wi-Fi. So you could connect it to your computer, you can connect it to or like a surface or to your iPad. Um, some other technology that we've utilized are schedule apps. Um, iPromps is an app. Um, it's gotten a little bit pricier, so we don't use that as much. ChoiceWorks is a great um, calendar app if you're wanting to kind of keep schedule or keep track of what your day looks like. Um, I'm going to show that to you all. And I'm actually on a different computer, but you could use... Uh -oh pictures and you could have your list of things to do and then when you're finished with it art you can move all it done. to the all done category you can set a timer you see on my second one i can have a timer of how long i'm participating in it um, that's just the day you could plan out for the um the week or the month the app can be locked so if you don't um want changing around um you can lock it but it is a great user friendly. You can actually, you can also use actual photos. So if you want to plan your work day and take pictures of all the tasks, you can snap them and be ready to, to go. Um, it's easy to reset as well. You can also, it has a feature 
so that you could print the view or you could also email the view. So whatever you're looking at, if you wanted to send that to somebody, hey, here's the schedule for the day or hey, mom or dad, here's what I'm working on today. Here's what we're going to do. Um, recording apps. So apps that will, I know some individuals um, are in class, so they might need things recorded, but they also want to be typing or maybe writing or snapping pictures. Audio note is a great um, app that it'll let you record what you're hearing. So whatever the presentation is, because I know we can record, um, you know, we can always ask for recorded Zoom sessions, but this would just record what's in the background, still let you type or write, um, circling, highlighting, it's available on the iPad. We've used that some. Um, social stories. So, you know, if I need to create a story, I've also used this not just for social stories, but I've used it just to create stories. If I'm doing a project on, um, I was working earlier on a project on bats. We created a story using the social story creator. Um, it will email the story. It will print the story. And it, I believe, is free. If it's not, it's very inexpensive. It will allow you to import pictures, uh, photos. You could do recordings. Um, I really like it because I think you can use it for a variety of um, work. Uh, graphic organizers. So if somebody is trying to um, produce some written work, um, there's all different apps um, that will let you type out your sentences. There's also apps that will let you use pictures. So you can sequence your pictures. First, I'm going to talk about where a bat lives. So I might have a picture of a bat. Then I'm going to talk about or their house. Then I'm going to talk about what they eat. So I could represent that by pictures and a sequence. Um, and then word prediction programs. CoWriter is a program that we've been using, um, especially more probably high school age, college age, um, just kind of that older teen that maybe they're going to uh, write on a certain topic, but maybe need some additional support on spelling or like myself, I'm a horrible speller. So I can load in a dictionary related to that topic. So it will predict words related to the topic. So if I'm going to write about bats, maybe I'm having a hard time spelling something related to bats, it's going to predict things that are more relevant to bats versus things that are relevant to math, um, which is nice because word prediction sometimes just pulls words from nowhere. So that's some technology that we um, have utilized um, and that we've worked with other individuals on. Um, here's the picture of the big blue Kinder Board Bluetooth keyboard. So this is what I was talking about. We'll connect via uh, Bluetooth and as you see it has the buttons that are bigger and those buttons really it's a QWERTY style but it really does give feedback into the keys have been activated and I think that's very useful. Um, I think sometimes when we're typing and there's not much input it's easy to miss letters. I also like how it's color coded with vowels. Alrighty, so strategies for success. Some things that we've used and learned along the way. So before having an online session, try to ask for as much information to be able to prep. So what are we going to be doing today? Is there materials that I need available? Are there things that I could print out or things that I could have available to help make the session go better? Um, plan transitions. So how long am I going to work on this and what am I going to do after? Planning that out ahead of time, I feel like really helps and it, it helps to prevent maybe frustration before I've been doing this for a long time. I've been sitting for a long time and it's, I'm getting kind of tired of it. So trying to plan that transition. Use of sensory input. So fidgets, um, we are using these at my house and we've used these at Intech. These are cool. So I'm sure you all have seen like the pillows, like the mermaid sequin pillows, but sometimes the pillows are big and then they can be distracting. So these could 
they have a sticker on the back. So as you're sitting and listening, you could just be using it and fidgeting with it and it's minimal distraction or it's something smaller. So you're not trying to coordinate all these things. So these are nice. Um, things like this, like gel discs um, are nice just to give your hands input. This is something that's really cool. Um, it's a game actually, but you can pop things. And as long as you're muted, this can give you some sensory input as you're listening maybe to be giving some input for focus. I know sometimes I need to fidget if I'm listening to somebody. Um, something Allison, where did, I'm sorry to interrupt. Where did you get those um, sequin strips? It's called the Therapy Shop. It's okay. Therapy Shop, S-H-O-P-P-E.com. And they come in a package of two. Um, my daughter uses them. We have quite a few sensory things for, um, just to kind of help stay focused. Yeah. Um, as I do too. I, I usually I know, I have, I have a puff. I have yep, a yarn like, puff that I squeeze. <laughs> we have, yeah. I have all these things. Some people <laughs> like things like this to just kind of help watch as you're listening. So the therapy shop, they have a lot of really cool kind of non-traditional things. If that, if, mm -hmm. like I thought these were great because a lot of, um, a lot of individuals love this, the mermaid sequins, but then the pillow just becomes big and then it's tempting to want to lay on it. And right. becomes a thing. At least, at least that's what we were doing. Um, something that I think I have heard a lot of, um, that people talk about, um, individuals talk about is sometimes if I'm trying to listen to something on the screen, having the keys in front of me on the keyboard are distracting. I feel like I need to be typing or doing work or, or activating the keys. Um, so what we came up with, and I don't have any because we've given them out. We kind of came up with, we were taking pieces of thicker fabric, putting a, um, piece of cardboard under it and then putting Velcro strips and sliding it over the keyboard. So if it's connected like a laptop, just Velcro and something over so that we just took the visual distraction away. It's something easy, handmade. Um, we've tried, you know, like covering it up with just something, but it seems like it fell off or if, if somebody moved and it was repositioned. So the Velcro strips, just being able to Velcro those pieces together and almost like a pillowcase. Mm -hmm. um, I had talked to somebody the other day about, I wonder if we haven't tried it, but just a pillowcase and folding it down. So it just removes any visual distraction. Um, we found that to be really helpful. And then another thing that I oftentimes don't think, um, I didn't think about before we started doing um, a lot of virtual is what's the background behind the individual, where they set up at? Because what I started noticing is I was paying attention to what was behind me or if there were things going on behind me. And then that became a distraction um, and then made it hard for me to focus on what was on the screen because I was seeing things behind. Um, so sometimes if able to be set up, you know, with a, a wall behind you or something, because then it became less distracting. Um, some other things are identifying what I'm going to do once I get my break time. I do that for myself. I think I have to get these tasks done and then this is what I'm going to do. This is my reinforcement after I get my tasks done for my breaks. Um, movement. I think movement doesn't get enough, um, probably just thought because I think with virtual, everybody needs to be sitting, doing, but um, a lot of times, the things that we do is we begin with movement. We take a movement break in the middle. Sometimes we have music. Um, we try to get our bodies going because then it helps us to be able to recenter and focus. And then also uh, social stories, if there's expectations for um, the meeting. Um, and another thing to think about, and we've been doing this quite a bit, when thinking about goals, if there's, we're all working on goals, we're working on goals at work, we're working on goals with meetings. When you're thinking about these, can they be accomplished through project-based learning? So could it be more hands-on um, or could you combine multiple things? For example, 
um, we were working on sentence building, we were working on vocabulary. Um, so we made, you know, we took digital photos of something that was really fun and then worked on sentence building related to the digital photos and added in new pictures for vocabulary. So making a picture book or something that's not sitting and just listening or having to say something back more hands on. Um, and another um, thing that I have heard from a lot of individuals is making sure that everybody has enough time to, to think about what's, what the question is or what the prompt is if, if I need longer to think about it, if I need to get pictures ready to communicate, if I'm using a communication device, um, oftentimes it's moving quickly and that wait time isn't there. So being able to advocate and tell whoever's doing the class, the presentation, the session, hey, I need, I need more wait time or we need to think about when is my turn to go because I know I'm going to go third so that I can then plan. I know I have that time and it doesn't make me feel pressured. Um, here are some other sensory things. This is called the blue wedge is called a move and sit. Um, it's something that you can sit on. You can rock back and forth, but you don't have to get up. So it gives you movement. Um, the red is a weighted lap pad. Sometimes that's nice because it gives you some input when you are kind of moving around and you need to get up and move. It gives you that input into your body. Um, some individuals that we've worked with have been saying that they've been using like some um, like the weights that go around your ankles or your wrists. They um, they've been using that to kind of help them give their body input and give um, help them with focus and attention. And I think that is and just our contact information. I think that's it. That's that is what I had. Thank you, Allison. Um, I had a couple questions um, yeah. that came up when you were when you were talking. Um, what do you, I know that there's um, one family on this call and they and uh, her son doesn't want to get on any kind of Zoom whatsoever. <laughs> mm, okay. Like no motivation whatsoever. He doesn't want to do it. He's not doing it. So okay. uh, do you, have you had any, have you had any clients that are just, you know, do you have any tips for them? I have had a couple um that were very hesitant like just nope not doing it we had kind of the um the computer set up the ipad set up we were offering things um you know we gradually started building like if we would set a timer if we did it for five seconds then 10 seconds then we would reinforce that mm -hmm. um we would try to reinforce it um we also did a um kind of an activity where I would bring something to share and they would bring something to share and we would have to try to guess what each other's things to share were. Um, that might have been something that you guys have already done. Um, trying to get that engagement going. Yeah. Um, it worked really well for this individual. They were really excited because it was things they really liked and wanted to talk about. Um, and then I've had some individuals that it's just really hard for. And um, families have said that we've done some recording. So we just carry on with, here's what we're gonna do and do some recording. And they said they've noticed that if it's playing in the background, that we'll start to kind of glance at it. Yeah, almost like watching a movie rather than being- Yeah, being in real time. Participant. Yeah, yeah. yeah being in real time. So we um, initially were recording all of our sessions so that then, oh yeah, look at that. That was cool. Look at that. And there might be something that, I mean, we just continued on like that's what sure. we were doing. Mm -hmm. And um, we had some success with that as well. Yeah. Danae is, um, are, is he, he's in school online all day, right? Or is he? No, he's only in for like an hour and 45 minutes. Okay. Okay. Um, and then any longer than that, there's no way he would be, he would just be zoned out. Yeah, yeah. Just not, not into it. So he's not, he's just not doing any extracurriculars online right now. No, nothing. He wouldn't do school if I didn't make it. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, because we, I mean, we've been doing, Danae, we've, Danae and I have talked a little bit because we've been doing some really, really fun stuff on Zoom and uh, dance parties and like all kinds of fun stuff. And she's like, no, he doesn't, he doesn't have any interest in it, which I don't, I mean, I don't blame him, but right. didn't, didn't know. Is it, it just the, is it just the not wanting to do, like he likes screens in general, it's just not wanting to do the. No, if he does it, he would just sit there. Okay. And he would not participate. Okay. Yeah. So, like, if I did, if he if he joined the dance class, he wouldn't actually he, dance. Yeah. He would just watch. So he would just watch versus or. actively dance. If he like, even if, and I'm sure you've tried all this. If you gave him like a choice of two things, like, do you want me to dance, or do should we, you know? Be like silly snakes or something with that like doing something silly would that get his attention at all or it might for a little bit but i don't see it lasting very long lasting for yeah. long um i have a, yeah, it's just like a quick question oh hey susan yeah so do you think if it was one-on-one -on -one where he was like talking to someone he knew and there wasn't a big group around or is it just the group situation? I think it's groups because he talks to Richie. He'll get mm -hmm. like on a video call and talk to Richie and he'll tell, they'll, he like, he went outside with Richie and he sh uh, shot basketballs and still talking to Richie that whole time, but it was just the two of them. Yeah, I th sometimes think it's intimidating to have the yeah. whole group there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so maybe he's afraid people won't understand him. Right. I was just going to ask, is it a communication? Like, I don't want to repeat myself. <laughs> and I've had several yeah, people. He does that in class. He does. Well, uh, never mind. Never mind. I'm like, no, they want you to tell them what you just said. Right. You have to tell them. So I think a lot of it's his speech. Mm. That's what I was going to say. I've had worked with several families that, you know, maybe they weren't understood or um, they use a communication device. So they said they're just going so quickly. It By the time they find what they want to say and then they've moved on to three people past. Um, yeah. So I wonder, is it something that even like, would you know the prompt, even if there was one question or this is your question to answer that you would know ahead of time that you could say, let's practice this so that when it's your turn, you're going to be third or you're going to be second. And this is your question. We'll practice it. And then they could ask. And if he's practiced and I even wonder if it, no. <laughs> Not if you don't think they can understand him. He just, well, and I'm wondering in person with him. So it's not just online. It's even in person. Like Zoom or whatever, it's worse. Because it's kind of, and sometimes it's hard to hear and people freeze and. Yeah, and he gets, it, he's got, like in his class, there's this one little girl that will talk all the time. And he wants to mute her. And he can't, <laughs> he can't mute her. <laughs> and he gets aggravated. So when they put him in small groups, they leave, they're like in regular group for like 45 minutes. Okay. And then they leave the small groups. She is not in his small group because they know he just, she just irritates him so bad. Kind of shuts him down, like just forget yeah. he's going to be. Yeah. And I could see it because AJ's got one in his class. I'd love to put a muzzle on. <laughs> they just always want to talk. Well, yeah, that, 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 that was actually my <laughs> other question, um, Allison, is if you have any tips for me as a teacher or you know Susan's on this call too but I do have students so like I have so many in in my groups that they have to be muted the whole class but we move like so it'll be dance so we'll dance the whole time so there's no need for anyone to talk but like you know I've been doing um, book club and book club has um we've got you know usually 25 to 27 in book club so I try to have <laughs> something social like some things to where they can they can actually talk to me so mm -hmm. I will ask a question and let them think about it like you said so let's mm -hmm. say it's what who's your favorite character in Harry Potter so that they can each have a turn and, and be thinking about it 
but I'm not really sure what to do about the patience <laughs> of waiting for your turn. Mm -hmm. And then also, um, if I, if I'm doing, if I've moved on and we're not talking about that anymore, then only focusing on it's not, is it my turn to talk again? So, so, and even sometimes in class when we're, when we're dancing or, um, or just any, any time, it might be that someone just wants to tell me something, but I don't have the, I don't, I don't have the time or the, um, the moment to be able to answer that. How do I, other than just saying, you know, friends, you can reach out to me later <laughs> to talk to me about whatever it is, you know, do you have any tips about that? Do you have like a visual, like that you could even <laughs> just point to, like, this is what we're doing right now, or, um, I could. And many times it's also, um, we, I have guest teachers coming in. So like, I've got a choreographer that teaches dance. And so a lot of times they will be, you know, he'll be teaching dance and I'm, and he does, he's, you know, he's not looking at the screen. Right. They're only seeing him, but I'm seeing them wave the whole time. <laughs> and like, right. I know that they should be watching him, but I'm just seeing them wave trying to get someone's attention. And so I'm right. like, how do I not interrupt the class? but get them to understand that, you know, we, you should dance first. And then, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know, just didn't know if there was. I wonder if even having like, um, that's where I'm wondering if like having one of the reflector things so that you could have your iPad up and maybe having like the visual timer or something like, here's the picture and here's the time and this is what we're doing right now so that it's just that visual mm -hmm. um and going over like when you see this here's the timer here's what we're here's what our topic is right now and mm -hmm. when you see it change or you see a question um and i'll sometimes do that even in like sessions if i'm say for instance reading a story and we're working on like story comprehension or something mm -hmm. then um I, I may have a card that as long as i'm holding it i mean we're not taking questions right now but then when it goes down right yeah almost like a visual because i think sometimes yeah. saying that it's like oh but i have a question now and i then i forgot right and then i think some of that too is i have a question now and if i don't ask it i'm gonna i'm gonna forget sure sure so yeah. i don't know and I could even do that too with, with my guest teachers. I could say, if you have a, if you have a red something behind you, then they know that it's not time for questions, but then, right. it, yeah, that's a good right. idea. Yeah. 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 Just as a visual. Cause I yes. think yeah, vi the visual cues, the visual, um, Megan Goodman, are you, are you being silly? Um, <laughs> um yeah that's a great that's that's great um hi diana oh i thought she was gonna ask a question um i found like trying to use the visual pieces i feel like has been um helpful something else that we did um with a couple of individuals that the initiation part was hard or the participation we got some of those they're at the dollar tree they're like they're actually meant to be um like in a closet and you push them and the light comes on and it's like a star we've done that because even sometimes raising our hand or like if we just push it and i see it i know that you know you're paying attention or that you're you're listening to what we're saying or just sometimes even that visual for them made it less, I don't know, scary or less, I don't know, or maybe the, the, the visual said to me, I mean, we've done it all different ways. Like I've had several individuals that say, you know, they're not being understood. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think that is a very, valid concern and and a big reason that individuals feel inhibited because that's why i was wondering if like practicing it and even then saying like this is what this is what we've practiced so then 
if that's what the response is to be able to get that confirmation like oh yeah because sometimes if if I just know like the keywords I can pick up yes or, yeah well and and that's one of the reasons I love I love um, giving them options like for instance I'm going back to book club again but we talked about um, we're doing hocus pocus and I yeah. let them choose um, the options of what, who your favorite character, and you can either tell us who it is, or you can act like them. Right. So then they could like laugh like a witch or they could, you right. know, they could do, so it was a lot more, you know, and we have some that, that are not as verbal. So if they didn't feel comfortable and like, you know, one guy meowed like a cat and then, you know, right. so they were able to have those options. Right. Um, or I wonder, there's an app, it's called, um, and I don't know if like pictures are needed, text is needed, you know, exactly. And I'm sure it's a broad continuum. Mm -hmm. There's an app called Sounding Board. It's free. Um, there's also an app, I think it's called Verbally, B-E-R-B-A-L-L-Y. Um, and so many of the, the um, so many of the, iPad apps now have the text to speech mm -hmm. that I wonder if having that or having the sounding board, if it, it's a picture that's needed, just being able to hold it up because it's something that can be put on there quickly just to try to, or even just some pictures like holding it up. Oh, okay. You were wanting to talk about a cat or you were wanting to talk sure. about yeah. the pumpkin mm -hmm. to help kind of not yeah. feel so... Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, I have had less, less trouble with someone not being able to communicate and more like with patients that it's not their turn yet. Okay. Um, and even, and even like, um, you know, I've had like, I, I feel like I was telling you before we started that, that I have, I've been having to turn the microphones off because it's like in the middle of everything I'm hearing, Miss Carly, Miss Carly, Miss Carly, you know, right. where someone wants to talk or interrupts their friend talking or something like that. Um, so it's more, it's more about the, the patient. So I, I, you know, I think social stories might be good. Yeah, for that. definitely that, that social stories app is awesome because it is something that can be created it can be emailed out to everybody. You can view it on email. Everybody can print it. Um, Cause my, my experience with the virtual, it has been the opposite of everybody um, that may have a communication device or, or something else to say is just kind of being skipped over. Mm -hmm. Like at the time I find what I want to say, four people have already gone and we're moved on to something else mm -hmm. or even yeah. just that like stop card, like stop. I have something I want to say. We've worked on that. Having the visual to say, or like I have something to say, like a speech bubble mm -hmm. holding it up. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that, and maybe the visual, like the timer and the visual picture of it's, it's just not time yet. <laughs> right. Because, because if one thing I think is so, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. I think it's so important that we talk about these things. And I love, I love the idea of the social story um, or stories. I love um, all the things we're doing because virtual learning's not going anywhere. And yeah. it's gonna, I really believe it's here to stay. So we wanna help our guys learn how to negotiate it and be successful with it. Yeah. Um, so as much, you know, this, I know not many people are here tonight, but it is really good information. and you know, maybe we can take it a step further with some like real concrete things and some social stories um, that we write for them to help. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I think too, when we think about what would be, if we were in person mm -hmm. and we think about what would be our nonverbal cues that we would do, sometimes it's that hand, sometimes it's the one minute, Sometimes it might be a sign for wait, uh, all things that we might do to say, oh, we're waiting, or we might, you know, point that we're talking to somebody, um, which is just harder visually because it's like everybody's there on the screen mm -hmm. together. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, we have, if, if there's stuff that, if, that you want to use to try to like implement some of these, like the iPad or with, 
with all these different apps on it, just let me know. And I mean, I can get an iPad ready for you so that if you want to try to implement these things and try things out, absolutely. We yeah. can get yeah. you hooked up with it. So then if it's something that works and is successful, then it works. It may be something that works for not just in your setting, but with other, you know, absolutely. other sessions. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Scott, do you have a question? Hey Scott. Yeah. Hey. Hi. Okay, question, Scott. Let me let me think. Okay. Oh, you want to think for a second? Yeah. Hi Scott. Hi Scott. <laughs> you have a runny nose. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let me think. Oh yeah. yeah. I I I agree with you, Cardi. You agree with me? What yeah. do you, what do you agree about? It, it, uh, you know that part, right? Some uh rapted or something like that. About the part what she was talking yeah. about with interrupting. Yeah. Yeah, people interrupting. That was happening today in book club a little bit, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we, we, yeah, it's, it's sometimes it's really hard for people to be, for our friends to be patient, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. We just sometimes have to wait for our turn, but you're always really patient, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, these, I mean, I, I wrote down every single one of your, um, your app, your apps. And, um, I'll also make a blog post and, um, share the PowerPoint with our families okay. as well. Um, yeah, just let me know if, we'll be on it too. if you want, if you need me to put stuff on an iPad and drop it by or send it over or whatever. Absolutely. Okay. So that the reflector app, I'm very, very curious about that. So like that like pops up onto your screen. So then if I were to screen share, it'd be there. Yep. Yep. For instance, let me see if I can like move in different things around to see if I can, I just got a new computer. At one point I had like three computers sitting here because <laughs> they're all dying on me. I say they're all losing computers right now. I'm sorry. I said I think a lot of people's losing them right now. Yes, mine had like the spinning wheel. I was like, oh dear. Uh, the, uh, my uh, nephew, his teacher, she bought one at Best Buy and had it two days, and the microphone burn up. She said oh. she was sitting there and smoke just started rolling out of her. Oh no. She said it was two days oh, old. Well, I hope she got a refund. Oh, they get they replaced it and they upgraded it because she had so much trouble. Oh my goodness. Is it okay if I share this with Charlie's teacher? Say one more time, Danae. Can I share this uh when you put this on with Charlie's teacher? Oh, of course. Absolutely. One hundred percent. Okay. She what? has a lot of trouble with the interrupting. And uh, that might, I think that would help her. And his IEP is uh, is Thursday. Yeah. So that, she called today and that was one thing we added to his goals was a technology goal. Oh, that's that is great. Him, this is not going away. And he's got to learn to sign in and stuff by himself. Mm -hmm. Let me see, so, is it okay if I leave and come back on my other computer? And yeah. let me try to show you what this looks yeah. like because I've yeah. got it, my iPad pulled up. Yeah, absolutely. Here, well, here I we are. <laughs> I've learned a lot of things recently about Sandy, computers. Have I learned a lot of things about computers? Lately, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah, I've had to. <laughs> Well, that's AJ. He had, he's so far behind on homework because I could not, 
I just couldn't get it. It was, we get so frustrated. Me and him would both be in tears. And I'm like, AJ, I don't know what to tell you to do. So yeah. I told him, I had his conference with his teacher and she told me, she said, anytime you had trouble, just let me know. And she said, I can get one of the kids in class to help you. <laughs> I know, and she it's said, it for her. She so I had a little girl. What it was was we couldn't pick up the dot. It was in math, and he had like dots. She had to pick up and put like ten dots in this circle. Oh. We couldn't get the dots. We were spending an hour doing one circle. Oh my gosh! And the little, so the next day, the little girl gets on there and tells me what we're doing, and I'm like, oh my god! I can't <laughs> believe an eight year old just told me what I'm doing. <laughs> Oh. We got that going now. Can you let it let me share? Oh yeah, let me make you a co-host. Let's see if this works. 